Okay, I believe we are live. I okay. believe we are live. Hi, James. What up? <laughs> James. What yes. up? <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, guys, trying to uh, do this properly. I apologize in advance to James uh, and to everyone, <laughs> really. Uh, it's so nice to have you here, though. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for doing this. It's you're very awesome. You're you're the best, actually. <laughs> you're literally the best. <laughs> thank you. Like I literally I talked about you a few times, and it's like yeah, you're you're the best. Like you're absolutely the unbeatable, the the great. I feel like in the genre as well, uh, in the study with me genre, I feel like you're so amazing. You know, so yeah. Just a little compliment for beginning. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. But uh, I definitely wouldn't uh, have made it without people to look up to like you. So, I mean, when you wrote me that, I was very impressed. Like you wrote me in the email that you you watched me you watched me in the beginning that you find inspiration in in my live stream. I was so moved by that. Like, did you? Like because you're you're so big, like you're the star of the study with me live. Like there is not not even a contest, I would say. What do you think, chat? Good morning, chat. By the way, well, good evening, actually. What up, guys? <laughs> so yeah, you're you're a star. I've I've been talking about it uh, fairly enough because, uh, like, what what do you think uh, this is like? Why do you think you are so so amazing and so big in this genre? Just as a like, what's your per perception? Um, I don't know if I would call myself like bigger. I still view myself as kind of like an underdog. Mm -hmm. Like, I think there's still a bunch of people that I want to surpass. Yeah. And uh, one thing for me is that I tried to say it's almost possible. Mm -hmm. So I don't really look at my numbers too much. Like maybe once a week. Mm -hmm. um, I'm only focused on the process of getting better. And then as I improve my process, the results come with it. So. Well, many, many study with me uh, channels. Um, well, before, before we start talking, let me, let me just say something also to the chat and everyone watching. Uh, I apologize to you as well. I already apologize with James, uh, but I apologize with the chat and everyone as well of my bad English is going to be bad. So I'm just going to say it. <laughs> That's I'm fine. Sorry, it's fine. He, it's he fine. is a native. Okay. I'm Italian. I don't really speak the language. I will try my best, but I really apologize to everyone for my mistake. If I make someone, someone, you see, you see, uh, anyway. So, yeah, I mean, I was talking, I was thinking, uh, I like your Mr. Beast approach uh, to the, to like staying more humble. And I think is, is a good mindset. I feel like there are many mm, small channel that, you know, streams. Uh, I sometimes, I know a, a bunch of them. What, what would you advise a smaller channel to do in this type of, uh, let's say, niche? I think what I did right was I wasn't focused at the number, on the numbers at the start at all. Um, I just wanted to produce the best quality stream and the algorithm rewards that. So the best quality as in like consistency in terms of image quality, sound quality, relatability, content, duration. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into it. And I got off on the right foot on that. Like I started streaming on a whim, but I've had a lot of knowledge about live streams before and I'm kind of just interested in the topic so I knew what I liked and that happened to help me a lot when I started streaming um so if you're a new channel and uh, you want to start streaming you can't be too overly concerned with the numbers um if you get too concerned with the numbers which is a measure then it doesn't become a good um the quotes like this, when your measure becomes a target, it's no longer a good measure. You need to be improving your process, how deep you get, how consistent you are. 
your image quality, things like that. And once you do that, the results will follow. So I agree. that's my advice. I agree. That's a great, that's a great point. Um, that's really a great point. I mean, I feel like also you introduced in the genre the like having the rain sound. I don't was anyone using this rain sound before you? I'm not sure. Uh, I think I did a lot of streams or a lot of things that set my stream apart, like the rain sounds, the discord. Yeah, the, the discord. one hour. I, I, actually, I actually took the discord from you. I, I thought it was so great. That's that's uh, not sure. Uh, uh, yeah. So one great. of my viewers, one of my viewers, Esther, she told me to start it. So I was hesitant to that first, but uh, it turned out to be. She was right. So it was good. Yeah, I mean, guys, th this is the truth. I actually, you know, took some ideas from James because he's, he's a genius in this genre, I would say. It's way better than me. So I just I just took, uh, like, the Discord, for example. I love it so much because you can see the people who is there, who is not. Uh, I just like it. You see the people that are there as well. Yeah, it kind of gives, like, a a face. And a, it's, it's, like, much more of a community when you can interact with other people. So... Yeah, it's true. It's so true. Yeah. Um, what is like, like I watch your videos. I want to congratulate you again, like on your videos. It's been lately. It's been so amazing. Um, like guys, of course, you probably know James. I don't really need to say this, but if you don't know him, smash subscribe on his channel and like everything he does as well, because it's great. I just feel like I have to say it, even though he's so big, it doesn't really need this, but do it do it okay Thank you. do it guys <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i saw your videos i especially enjoyed i mean one of your recent videos we talked about it briefly before we started uh went viral it's so good uh, is what how you start at 3.30 and actually enjoyed uh, also as well the book uh, the book one now before we talk about that like what I wanted to talk to talk about more like being a streamer, because your channel is actually very similar, history wise to mine as to mine as well. Because you didn't start the channel as a study with me channel, it kind of became uh, in the process. Like, uh, what was your process? The process for you? I can I will tell you my process as well. But I, I was curious about yours as well. Mm -hmm. Like, did you start? Where did you start a study? Because your first videos. Your first video is a computer one, and then there is some gaming, uh, as much as mine. And then you start uh, the study with me. What, what made you start? So it's just like my personal account. So I just had a bunch of random stuff on it. And like, I had like 200 subscribers. And then I posted that study with me video. And then I dropped to like 50. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, so for like, the longest time I was just using it as a place to put random crap on the internet, you know? And uh, I started posting study with me content right when the pandemic hit, which is why I did it. Um, mm. I thought I was, I uh, didn't watch study with me videos before. Like I didn't know they existed, but maybe like a month before the pandemic hit um, study vibes, her video with like 2.5 million views. Yeah. I recommend it to me and I clicked on it. I was like, damn, how this can is a really you do good that? idea. Like, tell me, how can you do something like that? Because I, uh, it, <laughs> yeah. I was felt really lucky, but so I like, I saw her video and it took me like <laughs> 35 <laughs> seconds to decide that I'm yeah. going to do this too. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I had like a lot of ideas, even like after 20 seconds, I knew how I could make, you know, this better in my own opinion. So I was like, all right. And then uh, the pandemic hit, and then I'm um, kind of just took off from there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, it's similar. Like for me, I started YouTube to post things on the internet, like and share mm -hmm. and have, like a little community of people. I start when I started the study with me. Is I was like two thousand subscribers, something like that, and it blew up to twenty, and it's for me it's so much, and uh, it's like. For me, it started as a project, actually. I didn't expect it to last this long. Did you expect it to, like, keep doing this for so long? Or is it just my my own uh, story? 
like for me it was like well i will maybe do this for like three months i graduate and then i stop oh have you graduated already like i will graduate next two months in two months yeah okay congratulations thank you man it's um just, yeah i thought it would be an interesting experiment to do while we're all stuck at home so i was just planning on doing it while we're all indoors did, all day did it help with the exams though because i feel like from from my experience uh, it doesn't really help i mean i feel like if i can actually not streaming and studying i feel like i i would be more motivated because with the stream you have the pressure okay there are the people i have to answer them or you know those kind of things uh what is it for you is it the same for you as well or uh -huh. like... the stream for me has definitely been pretty symbiotic like it helps me and it helps the people who watch it i think it helps me because you know it keeps me accountable people can a lot of people can see whether or not i'm studying that day so they're there and they can see my screen the entire time they know what i'm doing um keeps me on focus uh for the people it also provides someone to study along with so there for me there wasn't too much pressure to like do well or impress them i just kind of wanted to be there for them in case they need me so yeah it's been a basically completely beneficial for me including the exams i see well, how many exams did you do while streaming i had like four classes last semester so each one of them had a final four exams i see four exams well yeah i mean it definitely helped in some way but i feel like for, for me at least when i have an exam like i need those last 10 days just by myself maybe it's, i feel like it's just i'm a big introvert i I, th <laughs> I think you are too i'm not sure but uh, your personality type but yeah i mean for me it would be just better to just stay with myself uh, which you know it's not an approach that like i feel like maybe i just i am the only one that has it i'm just curious to know if you have it as well or because with lena i had lena which is another study with miss streamer um a week ago and she was like no 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 for me it's like i have to stream it to the last freaking hour and it's like what <laughs> yeah for me yeah um sorry what was your question it was yeah i mean like do you need do you feel like you need sometimes before an exam time uh, for yourself um revising or you feel like you can stream to the very last um, moment before the exam or something like that um the way i kind of structure my study schedule is to prevent the necessary like prevent cramming or so I, I revise well ahead of time and uh i don't really feel that pressure to go in a cave somewhere and uh mm -hmm. go as hard as i can so you stream pretty much until the last day I stream while I take the exam so you can go see me take. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then it's just me. Then it's just me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so my professors are probably really confused when I'm just randomly talking to <laughs> all of a sudden. But... Did you? Did you actually stream while you were doing the exam? Yeah. What? Well, as much as I could. So. Really? A yeah. few of them were uh, like right when I ended the stream, so I had a take this off but like any of them that uh were during the exam or the stream time yeah i just kind of did them during that the stream <laughs> wow i can't see myself do that but wait did you go in person wasn't it uh, online yeah they're all online for me so oh i see i see yeah yeah so you were streaming at home while you were doing the exam i see mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. For some reason, I just imagined you bringing like a laptop to a place. Oh. <laughs> I was no. like, wait a minute. No, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> that means, yeah, I wouldn't do that. But uh, I just kind of took all these ends right here. So Nice. Nice. Well, you study engineering, which is hard as well. Like it's the exams. Yeah, a lot of work. Yeah, it must be very hard. Uh, how is it with Mika instead? I feel like uh, with a cat. Uh. 
like this. She definitely keeps it uh, lively in here. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you close the door when you have the exam? Like, don't you dare enter or you know, something like that. If she's sleeping, I'll uh, just let her chill there. But uh, if she's running around, yeah, I'll throw her out during the exams. So. I see. Well, I mean, life as a streamer for me is challenging, especially like, um, I would say spend people, spend time with other people gets really hard. Like, do you, I don't know this, do you have a girlfriend or are you having some type of relationship going on or? Uh, no, I don't, I don't have one. Well, I'll keep it that way, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to stream and have a relationship at the same time. It's so hard. So Yeah, I could imagine. Yeah, it's yeah. probably for the best. I feel like I need a cat as well. <laughs> like a dog or something. Hello. <laughs> Just to keep me company. Uh, I mean, Malik in the chat of all. She, she's sort of my companion, but yeah. Um, well, another thing that I wanted to talk about with you is like economic stability, like financial stability. Like one thing that I think it's so cool. It's so, so cool. You are actually the first study with me streamer that achieved, uh, um, you know, economic stability to a certain extent, because you see, not even study vibes really does it that way. Like she doesn't stream. Me, I mean, I don't have any way, either way, I can't do that anyway. Some other streamers do something, but I think you can actually sustain yourself with it. How, how much was the monetization in your mind uh, while you were streaming? And uh, like, what is like to go from, you know, I'm not really earning anything to, oh, wow, I'm actually le earning something. I can, you know, sustain myself, things like that. Um, well, like... The first five or six months of streaming, I made maybe a hundred dollars a you month. Don't have to, like, you don't have to tell me how much you make. Like, I don't, I don't want you to okay, give okay. numbers. I don't really don't. It's just the experience to me is really interesting because I, I started and I wasn't making any money. Actually, the first money I made was in this last month and it's been the only month I've ever got anything. <laughs> but it's so cool that you can you can sustain yourself while doing something you love. And like, it's, it's so cool to me, that concept. So what does it feel to you? You know, how it came to be, I guess, like, I kind of want to hear your side as well on this. Well, I was already sustaining myself like before streaming. So I'm a researcher at a lab at my school. Um, and I make enough to like pay rent there, like barely, but I do. And then the stream money is really like get food and usually I just put the rest of it back into the stream. So it's hasn't been too big of a life difference for me. Like, I mean, um, do you do I, research? So you are like employed there? Do you work there? Yeah, I uh, work for my school. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know this. So you, how can you stream though? Uh, is with the timing, uh, how can you? Oh, so I, I do coding, so I can just basically do it from anywhere. And Oh, that's so cool. So you can work while streaming pretty much. Yeah, and it's basically studying because um, yeah, I mean, I am researching. Yeah. Damn, so. that's so cool. Damn. <laughs> I didn't know this. This is so cool. Well, nice. Well, you never uh, you never stop to uh, know new things. That's really, really interesting. That's a double. Like for me, it was just cool to get something while I was doing something I love, but you are tripling down on that. You're doing something you love, you're getting some money and you're actually working at the same time. It's, yeah, and, uh, it's yeah. so cool. <laughs> Research is a really good um, occupation for an undergraduate because it looks really good on your resume. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pr professors are like understanding about you know, your student life and we don't, they're, they're we don't, nice people. We don't really have this in Italy. Like, how, what do you mean researcher? Like you have the library coding, you said, but like. Um, oh, so um, like writing papers, like research papers, academic papers, stuff like that. 
um, we research synthetic biology at my lab and the software for them specifically. So it's basically just writing software. Oh. This is so cool. This is so cool. I mean, we don't really have this stuff in Italy. We just, you're not really supposed, like you can do like an internship, things like that uh, with the university, but like to have your own lab uh, and you get paid uh, to have the, well, you provide, you know, papers, I guess. Well, we don't really have the paper thing in Italy. In Italy, we just study, study, study. We don't really write much. It's kind of sad, actually. <laughs> but yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, that's cool, though. That's cool that you get to do this. How, how do you see yourself like in, in two years, three years? Like, what's your... I feel like you can... You know, I see you do videos about productivity. Like, do you want to develop more on that? Um, like, how do you see the future in this mm -hmm. I think that whatever I end up doing, it'll be whatever helps the most people. And as long as I'm doing that, I'll be happy. So who knows what I'm going to be doing, but it might not be social media. It might be, you know, teaching English it might be, who knows? So. I mean, that's really, that's really nice. That's a really nice thought. I just want to help as many people as I can. I think is a great, is a great thought. And uh, yeah, I mean, f for me, like for me, it wasn't really a, like, I, <laughs> I don't know if I want to keep doing study stuff, you know, like I'm kind of want to do other stuff as well. And it's like, mm -hmm. uh, but well, that's, that is nice. Like, can you see yourself do something different from, you know, studying and produce? I'm just, it's just a, my curiosity as a streamer, because I'm like, you know, I didn't start this channel specifically for studying. Uh, it kind of became for studying. Like, did you ever thought about, you know, well, maybe I want to do something else, like I have no entertainment or more fun stuff or, you know, things like that. Have you ever thought about it? I think that, you know, when I was like the first 30 seconds, when I saw that video for the first time, the, the I think the very first thought was, I'm going to make studying cool so that more people will do it. And oh. um, that's just kind of been what I've been trying to do. And that's still what I'm trying to do. So uh, I just want to focus on this right now. Well, that's, that is nice. That is really nice. I mean, yeah, I mean, my story on that manner, I feel like is a bit different, but it's, it's really nice. It's a nice project. I wanted to talk about uh, as, as well. Well, we, we talk about the streamer stuff, streaming. Uh, how, how do you spend your time off? Like, is anything you do like when you're I sleep when I don't stream, I just sleeping all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I go running on Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday recently. I switched off of Friday to Saturday. So yeah, I'm training for a marathon in March. So I've just been running a lot after the stream. Yes. And then on the off days, I usually just relax with the cat and uh, got a big old stack of books right here trying to, <laughs> trying to work through, but um, do that. I tried to just uh, spend as little time after the stream on like the internet and social media, trying to stay grounded, you know, trying to live an actual life and uh, think deep thoughts instead of just processing stuff all day. Yeah, you read a lot as well. I, I loved your uh, your video about the books you read. It was so nice. So, <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah, I mean, so many good points as well about habits. Uh, I like the book Atomic Habits and what you said about it. I feel like habits are so important. Uh, uh, there, there is a there is a great quote about it, um, which I kind of want to like. Um, it is. It's it's, it's I don't, maybe you hear this I don't know, but it says. Um, basically, you start with your thoughts, thoughts. You plant a thoughts. No, you. My English. Sorry, guys. Uh, you plant a thought. You get an action. You plant an action. You get a habit. You plant a habit, you get a character. You plant a character, you get a destiny. Like, 
for me, it's so important uh, what you said about habits. And I feel like on that note, like starting with your thoughts uh, is really the first thing you have to do. What do you think about it? How do you develop a great habit? What would you advise? Um, not an easy question, you know. For me, it took a lot of a lot, a lot of work before I finally turned studying into a habit. Like maybe over two years of just thinking about it in the back of my mind before I really committed to this lifestyle. So maybe in high school, I started studying Japanese because that was like one subject that I actually cared about. I didn't really, in high school, I wasn't passionate about studying at all. Like I was a horrible student. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So um, I think that finally like laid the groundwork and kind of made me understand that you need to work in order to obtain the things that you really truly desire. Um, the things that you can't buy, right? The things that people can hand down to you. And I still study Japanese, right? But it took a long time for me to kind of develop that tenacity. Like when you don't feel like studying, you just want to go lay down and watch YouTube videos. And it's really hard to get back into it, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess what I'm trying to say is um, for me, it was really gradual and I think for everyone it's different, but you need to be very conscious about it and you need to make it something that's important to you. And you also need to make it something you're passionate about. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely agree. Habits are so important. Uh, they are literally the everyday life is quite pretty much everything really it's, a, it's such a question that you get a lot as well I, I don't know in my stream i get a lot like how do you study 15 hours or how will you get to do that or 12 hours uh, it's yeah i mean it's such a hard question as you said and thinking about it is you love a self-help book by the way you told me that uh, I mean, you, you, you know, you didn't tell me that I saw in the video, sorry. <laughs> but uh, did, did you read uh, 12 Rules for Life uh, from by Jordan Peterson? Uh? No, I haven't read oh that book, God, actually. Read, read that book, <laughs> please. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I beg you. <laughs> I'll uh, copy it down right now. Right? Do, do you know Jordan Peterson? Uh? Mm -hmm. Damn, that book is so good. All right, it's uh, on the list. Please, I beg you. It's such it's such a great book. <laughs> um, I feel about I feel like what you talk about, you know, about like um, laying down on the bed, uh, things like that, like watching YouTube videos. Like to me, like another subject that I really care about a lot is like mental health, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, like depression stuff things like that I, I had something like that recently mm -hmm. it was really really hard um and um, i kind of relate uh, with what you said about you know laying down and I, I i thought about it um like what do you think um like i don't i i feel like mental health is a really important a really important issue uh, did you ever felt in your life like that like maybe a bit depressed or like you had a very you're very young you're so young and so amazing but do you ever did you ever felt something like that like a personal story that made you feel that way um, yeah for sure for sure like, I think yeah. um, as a kid. Um, if you want to talk about it, like, you don't have to talk about it, okay? It's completely fine if you're like, no, I don't want to get into this. It's too personal. No, no, I think it's an important topic to discuss because it's something that blocks people from really achieving their full potential, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And um, if you can overcome it, then I think they'll be a lot more confident and be able to like achieve whatever they put their mind to. Like, um, so I guess like, I never really thought about my mental health too much, but it's something that does come up a lot. Like it kind of shows up in my life often. Um, like I had a friend who tried to commit suicide in high school and uh, it really took me off guard, right? But I think as a kid, I was put in a really difficult situation. Um, like my mom and dad, or my mom and, and dad separated when I was maybe eight years old. So my dad moved to a, a town about an hour away, and uh, we used to leave me with him every night and uh, we'd drive one hour to school every morning and uh, one hour back every evening and uh he's a good person right but he has a lot of personal demons he's a pretty bad alcoholic he uh a lot of DUIs. So uh, as a kid, we had like a breathalyzer in his car. And um, sometimes I like would go to school, you know, two hours late <laughs> as like an elementary school kid. And uh, I'll show up crying. So and, um, having that as your father figure as a kid, I think will either it'll put you in a like a difficult spot difficult spot it'll put you in a spot where you'll either rise to the occasion and overcome it or you'll become him and you'll just live the same life he did right and i think as a kid that would have been really easy for me to fall into because you know i didn't really have too many friends right i would show up to school late every other day two hours late crying and uh, no one wants to be a friend to the kid like that, right? So I don't know if I would call myself depressed at that point in my life, but my mom certainly was. And uh, having those two figures around really put me in a situation where I had to decide who I wanted to be, right? It's about how you react. And uh I decided that I wanted to be, you know, strong enough to protect her. Okay, it's, it's okay. Like, we don't have to talk about this more. Like, it's completely fine. Um, um, I think it's a really rough subject. It's a really rough subject. It's really nice of you to talk about it. Like, you, you don't have to talk about it more, okay? Uh, it's, it's, I, it's okay. Um, I, I can relate to it a lot. I can relate to it a lot because I went through something very similar as well you know you're a kid everything is it's a bit hard and um yeah i mean i, I was as well the kid that just showed up kind of crying and nobody wanted to talk up talk with me it's like get away uh so i, I can relate to that to that very very much uh like i don't want to talk about this anymore because i'm seeing you're very moved by this subject so let's let's move to something else i don't want to get into stuff like that but it's yeah i can i can relate to that it's very nice of you of sharing it and thank you for for sharing it with everyone it's it's really it must it must have been very tough but i don't want to talk about it anymore because i i don't want this i don't want i don't want you to feel you know i, I see you i see you so um i mean i feel like mental health is definitely definitely important i felt i felt extremely Move out. Okay, I'm. I'm just gonna go to. Um, I mean, I feel like I have to open up a, a bit as well here, because I have to say something about it as well. Um, I mean, when I was a kid as well, it was kind of rough as well. I mean, you know, people judge you, and I, I never really felt like I was fitting in. 
Uh, I always felt very bad. Um, but I, I, I was your age. I still had that problem, you know? Like, you're 20, dude. You're 20. I'm 26. I'm so old. You have no idea how strong you are. You have absolutely no idea how cool you are. Like, if I was 20 and I was doing this, uh, I would be like, oh my god. <laughs> I would be the best. You're so you're so amazing to be able to do what you're doing in your 20. Like I'm so old, dude. I am so freaking old. So props to you, man. Like if if I was 20, I was your age right now, I would be probably freaking going off on a bar with some friends, drinking some beers, some stupid stupid things, you know so it's for you it's it's so you're so amazing you really are so i wanted to to say that because it's, it's really rare to see someone that is you know as young as you and so mature and um you know it's it's really really great i was i was such an idiot when i had i was your age <laughs> i was <laughs> i was literally some people uh, some people stay that their whole lives you know yeah so, <laughs> that's good that you got you got out of it yeah yeah i would like freaking uh 10 with nights like after nights uh, like right now is recently i do like the 24 hour study with me just for kicks uh. <laughs> not really for studying but for kicks also for studying but uh, when i was your age i would actually do that but you know while not studying while doing something else so like have some beer with the pals and friends and like th those were bad companies i feel like as well uh, because they they kind of come become it's like they're like uh, how do you say it in english like when someone when you're doing something that is somewhat malevolent uh, and someone encourage that behavior is like complicit can it be is it is that the word like i feel like they were so complicit and i was letting myself be in that type of dynamic as well mm -hmm. so yeah I'm, I'm really glad i got out of it bad habits right we have to kill them we have to <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah we have to improve um i mean i saw that you love as well cal newport mm -hmm. the author such a great author man i have his book uh, well, I feel like this is a bit, uh, it doesn't really get into deep stuff. It's more like a, you know, one of those things that are a bit more, you know, showing. Surface stuff. level. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, like yeah. How, 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 be, how to become a straight A student. Oh, I've read that. I've read oh, that. i read that. Yeah. yeah. I think I have a. Oh, do you have it? I'm trying to see. Let's see. Uh... No, I, I read it and uh, I think I took it back to my mom's house because I already read it and that's not like something I need a reference too often, so I yeah. move it away, you know. Yeah, absolutely understandable. I think I think he's a, such a great author. Like it, it gives, it made me think as well. Like you said, you said in the video that made you think about like the depth of what you're studying. Uh, um, because he really talks about, you know, not really studying that long, but with really short um, period, like great depths, but short uh, studying sessions. Like how you, you talked about like measuring your depth uh, of studying ever since you read that book. Like, what is that? Can you explain more about it? Yeah, so <laughs> people don't measure how well they study correctly they measure how long they study they measure how good their grades are you're measuring your goal is your measure but when you do that you do things that degrade your process like if you want to sit down and study all day and sleep five hours and then do it again it's toxic productivity you're not maximizing the things you should be doing in your life like sleeping and getting enough food socializing mm -hmm. working out yeah and what you should be measuring yourself by is how deep you go how often you can get deep and produce work that most other people can't produce how focused you can get 
things like that are not valued on YouTube and YouTube being the largest platform, the most visited website on YouTube is becoming, it's like a, it's like a resource for people, but the resources are all made by maybe misguided people who don't know what's the best for people. So yeah, I think it becomes kind of toxic when people measure themselves by how long they study and rather than I mean, how I, deep I they the can go. I am the toxic guy, guys. I'm literally did 24 hours. But I feel like I feel like it's like a bit for kicks as well. Like people get it. Like you can't really you know study like these long times. But how do you measure it though? Like because depth uh, to a certain extent is subjective. Like how can you tell? Oh my god, I was so in depth with that. Uh, you know. What yeah, yeah. So at least what I do is I have like a little journal, right? And I have a part called um. I don't know if you can see it says deep work log and then you just go to it and then whenever you this is my old one that whenever you go deep you just cross it off and then you keep on checking it off and then when you check it off you write what you're doing how you're doing how much slept you get what you're studying all the factors that came around with that right and if you maximize that and you try to work towards reproducing that environment and put your mind in that state, you'll produce better work in a short amount of time. Yeah, than in longer. Yeah, and this is something I'm still working on. Like, this is my biggest goal in my studying career, right? Is trying to maximize how long I can get deep, which is extremely difficult, but... Yeah, um, yeah I feel like, it's like, I don't know. I'm not even sure how do you Mm. it's it's rough it's rough it's a rough subject it is it's hard to actually put some measure on it yeah, you, you can't quantify it. it's yeah. just something that you have to feel and that's why people don't gravitate towards that right it's why they gravitate towards m numbers that you can search and grades that you can see so i wish that people would value that more because oftentimes it's like yeah, I studied 10 hours, man. But at the same time, they're also checking their email for three hours, responding to random shit, doing things that you could do, like your grandma could do for you, you know? You're not changing the world when you do that. You're just telling yourself a lie. Yeah. And yeah, I like wish this. that on YouTube, people would, they would, it kind of promotes that kind of behavior when well, YouTube itself is inherently like that, right? You have to get people to click on your videos. Yeah. So you provide them with things that they can find. You provide them with things that people want to see, which is misguided. And I'm trying to change that. So, No, I mean, that's a, that's very noble. I, I mean, I, I thought about this fairly enough with other streamers as well. Like what I found is, and I'm very open about it. I always talk about it as well. Like what you do for YouTube what is best for YouTube often is not very good for your actual study career, I feel like. So, you know, if you're working on, you know, making your video more clicked and stuff, you have to put work and time on that. And so you're not putting work and time on actually being a better student with, you know, let's say better grades, which is again a measure, but those two things require time. So you rather go all, all out on one or, or, or the second. So I totally agree with that. And I talk about it fairly enough as well on the streams. So, I mean, when I do, like right now, I'm in a position where I can do whatever I want because I just need to do the thesis and I, I'm already graduated pretty much. I just have to write the paper and I'm done. So I can even do 24 hours every day. I don't really it doesn't really matter. I have two months to write a thesis that I can, that I can write in 20 days. So I don't really need that much time. Uh, well, of course, if I spend more time, you know, then I probably get better grades. But, you know, I find myself in a position in which I can do that. So uh, I kind of talked about it as well. I don't know if you know Ari Oresh. Do you know this other streamer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about it uh, fairly enough as well. I mean, uh, I think it's, it's an important subject because, you know, YouTube has its own dynamics. And sometimes you have to decide. Well, but... 
to be honest, like I can even do 70 hours, okay? Won't change a thing, you're still the best, you know? <laughs> like I can't, <laughs> there is things that still you can't change. Uh, and I feel like what you're doing right now, it's so good and keep doing it because it helps a lot of people and it's so amazing. Yeah, I think uh, law of diminishing returns, right? Do you really need to be studying 14 hours a day? Like, how did you even get yourself in that position in the first place? And yeah, I mean, this is hard. Yeah, balance. You need balance. Yeah. Well, I feel like I feel like um, I can. To my surprise, to my surprise, I can, I can study fifty. Like when I do fifteen hours, it's actually. I think you can actually manage that and still be somewhat like yeah effective. I would. I wouldn't say effective. When I get to the end of the 15 hours, of course, sometimes the other day, it was like I was just starting. I swear, I, sw I maybe it's because I did the 24 hours. Uh, so my brain just got used to very long hours. Uh, but I swear I got to the 15 hours uh, and I was keep telling to the chat, guys, it feels like I just started. Guys, it feels like I just started. What I experienced, though, so if, even since ever since um, even if I can be effective, I feel like very effective in 15 hours. When I do 24 now, I mean, of, of course not. Like if I do 24 hours in a day, which by the way, just for the meme, you should do at one point. You will get so many <laughs> views. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, what if James uh, does 24 hours just for the meme? Okay, maybe one, maybe after the exams, uh, like when you're cool and you can do whatever you want, just for the meme to do 24 hours. It would be, I don't know, it would be... <laughs> I'm, I'm curious um, to see that. What do you think? I think it would be counterproductive to my main message behind the channel. So it would oh, definitely be more meme. of like a, a low-key thing. Um, no, like I'm not against like having fun, but we need to be preaching something that's sustainable, right? people need to stick to this it needs to be life-changing to them they can't just do this for two weeks study for 18 hours a day burn out and then never want to study again you know mm -hmm. they need to have stability and sustainability and i think producing that sort of content would be no, i mean it's, it's very noble of you i get the point but i mean starting the stream by saying it yeah guys you shouldn't do it that's what i do like i say guys you shouldn't study 24 hours this is for the meme okay you, you don't have to do it like it's it's, it's like uh, purposely something you do just literally just for for kicks for laugh and also you know because it helps your channel as well clearly but uh like you start with that message like don't you see yourself uh, doing it just for you know for the fun of it just for fun for fun let's say you don't you don't really say no no it's too much i don't want to do it is that your approach i could do it if i wanted to but i think doing things like hey man go open this ice cream and lick it for fun it's kind of that same You're that right. same idea it's like there's a stupid trend where people are going to walmart it's, it's just... like it's like a mr beast stuff you know like you know mr beast right yeah, but it would have to be more of like a, a charity thing or something with a cause behind it. I wouldn't do it just for funsies, you know, it's too counterproductive to my message. I don't know. I mean, you, you, it's very noble of you to say that. But I mean, I like to joke about stuff and people know that um, I, even Mr. Beast, like he started when he actually got popular. It was when he was counting to 100,000 or you know, watching uh, Jake Paul every day, bro, for 10 hours straight. <laughs> like, that's clearly damaging you. <laughs> and it's clearly not good for you. But it's just for the meme of it. It's just fun for fun. Like, I'm completely fine if your channel is all about, well, no, it's just motivation, just inspiration. I don't want to do anything. But, you know, for my uh, for my character, it's, it's just like, just for yeah, the meme but of it. Yeah. If some, like, kid out there in high school sees some video or some dude studied for 24 hours and didn't click on it, but he saw him doing it. You know, I like feel bad about myself. What was I doing? And uh, sometimes that, sometimes that like, this is a joke thing doesn't always come through, right? 
Well, yeah, I get that, but I also feel like you can't control that. Like people of that year can do the craziest stuff uh, and really clicking on someone starting 24 hours is probably not even the worst. But apart from that, it's like everyone with a brain knows that it shouldn't start. I feel like it's so such a self-evident joke uh, that someone studied 24 hours. It doesn't even need to be explained. I mean, maybe, maybe it's just me. Like I always start a stream by saying, yeah, you shouldn't do that. I always say it. And I, th I think it's such a self-evident message that's studying 24 hours. I even go, guys, I'm, I'm literally sacrifice sacrificing my health here. Okay, <laughs> just for the meme. <laughs> it's like, I get it. It might be, it might be a bit crazy. That's a part of YouTube spirit as well, to some extent, you know? And uh, I really don't recommend anyone to do it, but I mean, I guess it's really noble of you. You're 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 very rooted in principle. I just I just like to kid around and you know to joke a bit, and uh, yeah, let's do it. Come on, <laughs> people like it. People say yeah, it's helpful. I, I I studied like from Korea. I can actually you know join you during the twelve hours. If you do twenty four hours, I can actually be there at the end. So you actually help me, and I'm like, well, okay, well, I guess okay. So I think I think it's it's, it's more beneficial than it is wounding uh, people because i mean it's so self-evident you shouldn't do that plus i think uh, i say you make me you're making me feel guilty now oh my god enrico you're so irresponsible doing 24 hours it's I'm just that like guilty. if you're sitting there for 24 hours I mean, can't you use on, that 24 dude. hours it's, it's to so self-evidently a joke come on make there other is, jokes there, and you have 24 hours <laughs> there is this guy ari oresh he studied for like 40 hours it's like the world record and it's like, okay, that's too much for me. Like, I draw the line on 24 hours. But what do you think that tells people when they see that? No, but 40, I mean, apart from the fact, I, I talk with my uncle. My, my uncle is like um medician, like med doc, a doctor, you know, of health. And it's like, yeah, I mean, your body can actually recover from 24 hours. Um, but like doing 40 hours, I remember watching Ari and he was like sweating and... Uh, it was, I would never do that. I feel like 24 hours is my limit. And if you sleep from a health perspective, uh, from a health perspective, you actually can recover from it. Wouldn't recommend it doing it anyway. Wouldn't recommend, especially not doing it in a single week, two times. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that either. But it's like... as Okay, as people with influence, we should be influencing the c correct things. So when... You get on a pa like a podium and you study for 40 hours you're not using your power correctly you are poisoning the people that trust and respect you it's not funny but you can't mix the two hours because everybody would just laugh when you say you know i'm gonna study on this stage for 24 hours everybody would be like what are you joking <laughs> it's like it, I, to me it's such a self-evident joke uh, that if you mistake it for a serious statement it's just ridiculous. I mean, it might be, it might be, just my thing. I always say it's wrong. I don't think I, I have any more. What is chat saying, guys? Am I guilty of using my? So if, it's just for jokes, James. I'm just if, joking. Uh, it's not. If you're an alcoholic I'm using, and I'm not drunk. So if you're <laughs> against alcohol and then for a joke, guys, I'm gonna drink an entire twenty-six pack Great just for the really joke. Move on. Sorry, sorry. I was looking at chat. I mean, uh, I, I think I think you have the more moral approach to the manner. I think it's really nice of you to say you should use your power to inspire positively. I think it's actually a very nice message. And on this specific point, uh, we might disagree, but I think it is true what you say, and it is really important that influencer, like Mr. Beast, I, I take Mr. Beast as an example, should use the, their power for good. Um, like Mr. Does. Beast does so much charity. That is so nice of him. I will just move on, chat. Okay, I see you going stop. Okay, I will do it. But what do you think about Mr. Beast? Because you're American, so what do you... Um, I really appreciate Mr. Beast's drive. He is a very down-to-earth person, but he's also very motivated from his drive to change the world. And a really comes through in his videos, I think. He wants to positively benefit people's life and he's making it 
cool to do that. So um, I have complete respect for him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, so, he's such a great dude. He started so small, it blew up so big. And now he's basically using his money to help people. Sometimes he does, you know, challenge that doesn't necessarily help people, but he, he still give away money to his friends. It's so nice of him. It's, it's such... I feel like he, in a certain way, in a weird, jokingly way, he kind of encapsulates the spirit of YouTube, almost. It's like crazy stuff, uh, nice intent, uh, weird jokes all in once. Like, yeah. I think the chat wants the... Uh... Chat wants my cat. Oh, Mika, Mika. <laughs> Where's Mika? All right. Let me, uh, let me go grab yeah, her real quick. Right? Let's show them. Everybody likes Mika. He's such a cute cat. <laughs> Here we chat to Mika, Mika. Yeah, James has the chat as well, guys. So she can he, he can see as well. We both can. I mean, I, I usually like to focus more on the conversation because it's nice to get into something with people and actually have a real conversation, I think, is such a great experience. But yeah, we both have the chat open. I agree. Okay, she's uh, on the cabinets, but she'll come in any second now. All right, chat. Are you happy? Uh, I'm assuming your guys are happy now. She will, she will come. Mika. Uh, this cat won't listen to anything, so <laughs> she'll come eventually, though. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's very nice to have a conversation with you, man. I feel like we get into real stuff, and that's, that's really, really nice. I wanted to ask you a few more stuff. I know you're you're very busy as well. Um, oh, let me see. Is. Oh yeah, I, do you have any inspirational quotes or like uh, thoughts uh, apart from like the video? Because you made this video about the books uh, and it was amazing. But there are others uh, thoughts or inspirational quote that you would like to share. Um. I don't rely on my motivation, so I don't really care for motivational quotes. That being said, I do have some quotes that I follow. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you have it too. I have one as well. I have it here. Oh. <laughs> Read it to me. I'm curious. In a society where make your Mediocrity is too often the standard and too often rewarded. There is intense fascination with men who detest mediocrity, who refuse to define themselves in continu continual terms, and who seek to translate tr traditionally recognized human capabilities. And uh, that was really like powerful to me personally because um. I do want to change the world, right? So people who are capable of doing that are the only ones who are discontent with mediocrity and complacency. Yeah. So. I mean, that was, that was a very powerful sentence. Um, I don't want to ask you to read it again because I'm seeing you're very moved by it. So I want, are you? <coughs> Okay. Also, kind of couldn't couldn't read my handwriting. <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. So, um, yeah. in, okay, in a society where mediocrity is too often the standard and too often rewarded, mm -hmm. there is intense fascination with men who detest mediocrity, who refuse to define themselves in continual terms, and who to seek to transcend traditionally recognized human capabilities. Oh wow! It's pretty not pretty nice pretty interesting well i think i think that is true i think though you know there, this reminds me of uh 12 rules for life uh, it reminds me of uh, stand up straight with your shoulders back that's first the first rule and uh, 
it's so much more than just you know stand up straight and have the the back like peterson talk about moral standing and moral strength like you shouldn't just do this you should do it also internally like you should be proud uh, that you are morally right that you feel morally right that you feel like you're not doing anything wrong like because so many people get uh into like okay i want to be successful so i will compromise that i will compromise that i will compromise that i will compromise that and it's like a dragon that grows and grows and grows and grows until it finally hits hit you you know because you compromise so much your soul pretty much is not there anymore you know so um, this is actually very very amazing from peterson it, it stuck me it, it kind of stuck with me and it's a very powerful thought yeah you should stand up with your straight with your shoulders back but think about your spirit as well and your morality as well you should keep it straight as well and as straight as you can and as powerful as you, as you can and uh, yeah i think that's that's a really that's a really important rule as well uh it's a really nice message as well in your quote i mean I, 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 I think I think it's an important thing. Morality is often, you know, replaced by easy, easy measures. You know, like okay, I will do this, so I, uh, I will get that. You know, but it, sometimes it becomes so big that you can't. Like if it is, like if you are doing a little thing, okay, but talk about it, admit it, and everything. But, uh, yeah. Your morality should should be strict too, uh, which I think is very powerful. I feel I feel like I'm trying to do it as well. It is a great it's a great principle. I would read you. What do you think about it? About this this idea? Any thought about it? Yeah, as a kid, I was extremely unconfident. Right, I, uh, public speaking is my worst phobia, and. Um, for, at least for me, like someone telling me, hey, stand up, kid, it was kind of, I don't want to say like empty, but it took, for me to become someone who's confident in myself, it took a lot of work to prove to myself that I was someone capable of doing the things that I wanted to do. So go back like two years and um, you have really different James, right? You have someone who didn't think that he would ever become someone and was just wallowing away and um, complacent and doing things, small things, really helped my self-confidence. So... Doing things that prove prove to yourself that maybe you're better than you you think you are, you know. And in Atomic Habits, James Clear talks about this. You have to embody the character that you want to become. And it was a lot of work for me personally to build self confidence. So I'm not sure if just like a quote in a book could do that for me, but I could see why for someone who are already is accomplished and just doubts themselves, that would be completely valid for them. Um, but for me, yeah, I, I, it took a lot of self growth and over time it took uh, a lot of effort. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can relate to that as well. I definitely can relate to that as well. Um, I think it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice attitude as well to develop that and let you let go of those parts of you almost i would say that was just so wrong um i like i like what you did there as well you compare yourself to what like james was two years ago that's another rule of jordan peterson like compare yourself to who you were yesterday not to who someone else is today um which I think I think is a is a powerful rule because it makes you it makes you think about yourself how you can improve 
and your habits, your thoughts, your action. Oh, you're doing this wrong. Oh, this wrong as well. Well, that idea wrong too. You might correct that, and you know, and you cannot look inside yourself constantly. Am I doing this right? Am I improving? Am I a better version of what I was when I was twenty? I can definitely tell I was. I'm a better person than when I was twenty. And you are so much better than me, even when I'm 26. <laughs> so, I mean, congratulations to you, man. You're really, you're really, really are amazing. I really like you. So uh, I actually no have homo, a question no for homo, you. No homo, no bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, I have a question for you. I have okay. a question for you. So um, what keeps you live streaming? Why do you continue to do this? Well, that's a very, very nice question. Um, I keep doing this, well, firstly, I guess because I really like doing YouTube and live stream is an extension of that um, aspect of me. I really like to share content and videos and, uh, you know, filming stuff. I really love it so much. So streaming became in the process an extension of that original core which I would even go as far as saying a part of me is like so rooted in me. Like I want to make, you know, originally it was movies, but videos, they are cool for me as well. Movies, content, I want to do it so bad. I'm so excited about it, man. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's just it's just like a, sh a shockwave in me. It's like a like pure energy in me. I want to make videos. I want to make content. Let's do 12 hours, 12 hours. Ha, let's do 50, 24, 4, no, 40, no. But it's like so, it's like a thunder, really. It's just such a strong energy. I want to do as much as you can. Uh, so I think it's deeply rooted on what I love to do. Like, I really love to do this. And that's really the first reason. Mm -hmm. I, I, actually, I actually like the idea of helping people. Like, I went around, uh, um, you know, it's... I know it sounds like bragging, but I'm not bragging. <laughs> but like I went around to, uh, I like to donate things. Okay, I really like to donate things. Even if I don't have money in the first place, I still donate things. That's good, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, YouTube is such a place for that as well. I mean, we talk about Mr. Beast is like the embodiment of that, you know? So mm -hmm. um, try to help people is really... It's really, it's really powerful. Like you probably get this as well. I feel like possibly every creator does, but when you get like a message, a very special message from someone, like, you know, I, I really, I, thanks to you, I was in a very bad place. Uh, I was, you know, my girlfriend left me. It was so awful. Uh, then I saw you on the stream, you having, you know, this, this thing and studying and you were able even if you were you know in a bad place to study anyway to keep going it really motivates me thank you so so much about it it helped me a lot like you know when you get these really deep that you can tell they are very deep stories like they're, they're actually pain there they're actually real blood uh it's such it's such a nice feeling to know that you can help someone that way you know so that's definitely another reason I feel I feel like though in whatever you do and you get that type of feedback that's that gives you some sort of motivation because you're helping someone you're actually you know yeah I mean I, I don't want I, I won't say his name uh, but uh, this story I just told was actually a true story of someone that talked about about this and we talked about in depth like we we did kind of today but privately clearly and that's a huge motivation too to try to help people and like really get in depth with people and really trying to have a real conversation with people. That is so cool, by the way. That's why I started the podcast. I kind of faded away <laughs> because as much as I love the podcast, they are a bit, uh, I feel like the channel wants me to study, you know, but mm -hmm. I, I really like to have conversations with people and actually get into stuff and really have real, even real disagreements sometimes, but they are real. They are really... Um, a real conversation you you can tell it's not just like oh hey what's up man oh yeah good all right uh tell me about that oh i met this girl whatever you know so having this uh, deep conversation it's really nice and i love that as well and that's uh, so i would say 
electricity about the content, helping people, real depths of thoughts. Uh, that is great too. That is great. Well, okay, <laughs> streamer to streamer, like um, streaming is not always like fun. You know, it's sometimes it can be really annoying. Chat can be trolling you. Yeah. They're not doing <laughs> doing what you want. Like, what do you tell yourself when that happens to keep pushing forward? Or what, what's going on in your head? Even not like subconsciously, what, what's happening? Well, I feel like, uh, I feel like sometimes I get that. Um, but you can't have uh, the good uh, and the beautiful without a little bit of bad. Like it, it just mm -hmm. does, doesn't work like that. So if, you, if you're in for a ride and you want to make good, you must be also understanding that bad will, will happen too and i think in those moments i just remind well okay there, there was one troll two troll whatever but look at all these other people that are actually writing that i'm actually helping that is actually you know impacted by it and uh, i feel like of course you get pissed at them sometimes it's like oh, again this troll oh my god you know I, I guess as a streamer to a streamer is understandable that ha that happened um but really, it doesn't really face me that much once you understand, yeah, this really simple thing. It just, you want the good, it will get the bad as well. And it's just not, you just don't get one and not the other, I guess. I wanted, okay, then yeah. actually as like a, okay. So that was as a streamer to a streamer. What about like a student to a student? Why are you, you said you were in your 20, you were a delinquent basically right <laughs> well, well, guys wait i'm not i wasn't a delinquent but i was <laughs> okay you were a different person yeah so let's what say that. Let's say that. what uh what caused that change and why do you keep on pushing that way well curiously enough this brings me up with uh, the question that i was going to give you which relates to einstein somehow because i know you like you like einstein i love einstein as well um, it was around your age when like, I started to read more. I started to really think, well, what I want to actually do. And I was in a very dark place. Uh, and having some figures, uh, some inspirational figures helped me. Uh, origi originally it was Albert uh, because, well, I actually, I have to be honest, I actually originally copied from Jobs because you know that like, I didn't know this, like Jobs had the Einstein picture in his room. I don't know if you know this. Oh, he didn't know it. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Einstein, he used to have um, like an Einstein picture and look at him. Like when he was thinking, like, you know, it was, it's actually true. Um, so originally I, I used Einstein as well. But there, was, there were other um, figures that I really loved, like Leonardo, um, Aristotle. I read a lot of it. Plato, I read a lot of it too. Shakespeare. Like I, reading books helped this transformation. You know, Were you always interested in, in those types of books, philosophy? Um, I would say, yeah, to a certain extent, since the beginning, really. Like, oh, okay. Like, as much as you, I wanted to, you know, impact the world in a certain way, you know, and try to improve it in some way. And I, it was, I was always drawn by these big figures, that, by these very charismatic and inspirational figures. It has always been with me. And uh, in that period, when I started to switch, uh, I would say I was particularly driven to those figures. I, I actually read, um, I don't know if you know the pa Pantheon. Do you know what uh, the MIT Pantheon uh, process, uh, project is? I've heard of it, but I'm not, you'll, have to, you'll have to tell me what it is. Uh, yeah, so basically the MIT did, because at one point I was like, I'm so inspired by these people. I want to find them. I want to find more of them. Like I wasn't satisfied with just reading Aristotle or Plato. Okay, let's find someone else. Um, I mean, Einstein didn't really write anything philosophical that you can actually read. So I couldn't really be satisfied with that. So I started looking. And so the Mid Pantheon is basically a project in which they ask MIT people, they ask themselves, okay, well, who is the most influential person that ever lived like in the entire history of the world? And it's like a top 10, top 50, you can go as far as you want. And I was like, whoa, I want to read more. I want to read. This is actually a rule from, from Peterson. Uh, rule something written by someone's great. 
and back then I would just wanted to see people that impacted the world, uh, the world. So I was like, well, let's know more about them. I was just curious, really. I wanted to do it as well. So I was like, yeah, let's read about it. I want to know more about it. Sounds fun to me. Uh, and um, and yeah, I basically read, found this list which change, which changes over time because it, of course it's basic, basically an algorithm that uses Wikipedia and to a certain extent it changes but some figures kind of stay there um so i was very drawn to these figures and uh, yeah in a, in a weird way they shaped me they shaped me and uh yeah when i was your your age really when, well no a bit younger actually probably i was like 18 16 uh, um Possibly, when I was younger, I had other figures, but it, it, they kind of evolve into other more complex. And uh, yeah, like the, that's really what I do. In, I did in university. I read so much. I read pretty much the Bible. That's the only thing that I miss. Like, come on, man, you have to read the Bible. Jesus, like, jeez, Jesus is such a. <laughs> you know, we even <laughs> yeah. say his name to this day. The, the, the man lived. I don't want to make a religion discourse, but it's like the man is clearly really important to the Western world. So, so deeply, so, you know, so I kind of want to read the Bible as well. So, I mean, I, I think I went on a tangent there. I'm sorry about that. I, I just, I just have so much to say about the question because it was a good question. So I, I think, yeah, I mean, <laughs> really, really, I was already hungry for knowledge, but around that age when I started to be, let's say, a delinquent, which I, I wasn't, by the way, guys, I wasn't a delinquent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was a bad I was a teenager, a come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like reading more and get into these figures in more depth uh, rather than a superficial knowledge and actually read and get to know more and ideas and these sort of things mm -hmm. uh, that uh, drove me away from that more teenager, drink a beer kind of stage, I guess, yeah. Mika! <laughs> hey, what are you doing? So I, I don't want to be the one that talks too much, guys. We have we have James here, so I don't want to really... I was, just, I was just answering your question, but you should be the one talking more because you are the, the epic guest. So I, I don't know, I wanted to ask you about this as well, like how came to you Einstein uh, as well, because I saw that is, and then I guess we already went over the one hour, then I will. Oh, I, was I, it only an hour? Sorry. Yeah. I was, um, well, it was one hour and 15, 15 minutes. Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry if I bored you, man, I, I didn't. No, that was interesting, that was interesting. No, I mean, I am sorry, I, I'm, I'm probably just, I, I'm pretty sure this interview was awful, everybody. I just apologize if you're watching this and you're like, oh, Enrico, you were awful as an interviewer. Yes, I probably was. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> okay, I just <laughs> no, you're good. I you're apologize good. in advance to everyone. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I just want to talk with James. Okay, that's all. Uh, but yeah, sorry, everyone. Uh, so yeah, what about? I mean, then I will I will let you go because it's already so kind of you to be here. To be honest, it's I didn't even expect you to accept. Actually, I was like, well, he's so busy. There is no way he will find the time to do this podcast thing. It was very nice of you to accept. Thank you so much about it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Then I will just I will just let you go. I will. I was curious about Einstein, but the, if you're busy. Oh, you, you know what? No, it's a. Uh, it's all good. I can talk for more. Um, I actually like left three hours open, so I'm not sure. I just wasn't sure how long it was gonna be, so I just kind of blocked the big old window. So if, if uh, you're good to talk more, then uh, yeah, sure, I'm good for. for some more. I, I was just curious about because it feels like we both are drawn to very inspirational figures uh, which i think is sort of natural especially when you're young uh, so i was curious to know what draws you to einstein uh, uh, since i see you i see you wearing a t-shirt of him and you know the book and like what yeah. um i think the 
I'm not really as interested in those kind of people's accomplishments. I'm mainly interested in how they did it and using how they did it and that information to improve my own process so that maybe one day, um, I don't want to say like I could do something like Einstein, but yeah. <laughs> you know, maximize me, my own me potential. Me, I mean, I, yeah. People who, those people who have maximized their own potential, I want to draw inspiration from them. Um, I mean, you can, to be honest. You're, you're very, you're, you're so young, dude. You have no <laughs> idea. I, I most definitely can't. I'm so old, but you're so young, dude. You, are, you have no idea how young and amazing you are. You, I swear to God, you have no idea. From a 26 years old, listen to me. You're amazing. So I, I interrupt you. Please keep keep going. So the, the question, though, um, inspirational figures was something that I didn't really have too much growing up. So it was something that, like, I don't really have any role models. Mm. Um, but I do have people that have inspired me. But when I'm like in a hard place, you know, I'm not like Einstein, what would he do? I'm more of a come up with my own thing kind of person. So um, it was just mainly, I'm not as interested in like philosophy. I'm more interested in practical things that they did that um, I can do myself. So like Steve Jobs, you know, he was a blistering intensity. <laughs> blistering intensity that's a uh, something that i wish i could have one of what, what does it mean exactly so blistering intensity all your cells in your body focus towards one goal right and for steve jobs that was producing the best product that he could and those products ended up changing the world right we wouldn't be talking the way we are talking right now without people like him um And yeah, I just tried to view those figures more as knowledge people and kind of like, what's the word I'm looking for? Real world examples of how their character maximizes their own potential. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's definitely a good way to look at it. I mean, jo yeah, I mean, <laughs> look at Musk, Jesus, man. <laughs> Yeah. So many stuff we did. It's these people are just I don't know, they're just they have like a magic wand and they can it's they are so, it's so amazing what some human you know person are capable of. So this draws to you. You you was you were interested in practical uh things, which is yeah, I mean it's it's very nice as well. It's, it's a similar I would say it's a similar motive uh, to mine as well. It's it's nice. Um, I will say that um, that people in my life have been like personal people I know have been a lot more impactful to me than those larger than life figures because yeah. like they're so large that it feels unapproachable right you don't know these people they lived 50 years ago but when you see that kid next to you who wants success more than anything that is what really pushes me personally to go as hard as I can and for me um I didn't meet that kind of person until high school until I was a senior in high school um and I just met him by by chance right I was like cleaning the room and like the room at my school I was just for some reason I, I never cleaned it up to that point but on that day in particular I was and then we have a new transfer student and I get to know them better and they're the most driven person I've ever seen. And at that point in my life, right, there was no fire in my heart. I didn't care what I was doing. I was um, just complacent. I was living in the back of my head while my body was just doing its own thing, you know? Yeah, just wandering around the world. Yeah, so people don't get as lucky as me they don't always know people who are that driven sometimes they grow up and they're just surrounded with 
people who are complacent all their life. So when, when you have like these big old figures that have changed the world, it's more of like a, a golden calf. It's something that they want to cherish, but it's not something they want to become. And yeah. YouTube, I think, has become a platform for my fire and me personally to reach as many people as I can. And uh, that's something that I'm grateful for. Um, Cause I like I had wished that I hadn't met that kind of person when I was in middle school. You know, who knows what what we'd be doing right now. So you mean like a, an inspirational figure or like? I wish I had known someone who was approachable and driven, because then I would have maybe think like earlier in my life I might have believed in myself that I could actually become someone like them like this person i met you know they were they didn't have the greatest life situations but uh yeah they did everything they could without ever complaining and uh yeah. i'm truly gr grateful that uh I had gone to know him. We didn't and, have to uh, talk I... about it, James. It no, is... no, it's good. It's good. I want to. Uh, I want to talk it's, about it's it. It's okay. It's completely fine. We don't have to talk about. No, it. no, no. I wish that I had known um, some of that driven earlier in my life. And these people on like YouTube, and in books, they're not approachable. You can't see yourself. In their shoes because they are too large 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 for your own life you know and uh yeah but i mean i think i think what you say is completely right completely right actually focusing more around the person that is next to you and try to help him or her is more important I think it truly think it is more important than just look at big figures and just go, oh my God, they're so amazing. Oh. I mean, that's important too. It's like, you, okay, you're looking for inspiration. That's completely fine. Everybody does that. But really just turn your head and look at the actual drama and the actual problems that are around you and the process as well that people are going through, like hard, hard things. Some people have to face the hardest things like it's it's moving it's moving out some people can even do that and keep doing it it's 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 really rough it's really rough on people on people and really just to look at these people and try to help them if you can at least trying it's really i think is the most important thing i think you said something very very wise there i fully completely agree with it I also think you're a bit, I think you're a bit hard on yourself, man. You're, you're so young. Trust me. You're 20. Trust me. You're so young. Don't think about when you were 16 or 18. Trust <laughs> me. <laughs> you are already, yeah. you're just started the twenties. I have four more years and I'm 30. I'm 30 for <laughs> years. Dude, I'm so old. Don't think about it. Don't mind it. Trust me. You are at the beginning of your 20. God, if I could be at the beginning of my 20 i would be so happy trust me trust me you're, you're you really are amazing and i think you said some very very wise words and fully agree with them yeah the old chat is going hearts and hearts <laughs> somebody's saying that i'm actually young i don't know about that guys but i will i will try to remember that <laughs> i think you are young 20 26 that's a uh... You still have a, a long, 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 long time before. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you'll be you'll call yourself old when uh, maybe you're forty five. But for now, you're <laughs> man. You still look like you're twenty three. You know. Yeah, I know. People tell me that I look younger than I am, but yeah, I mean, I I try to not think too much about it because I don't like it to become like, oh, you're old, you can't do this. Oh, you're old, you can't do this. Well, I will try my best. I try not to be in that mindset. 
but if if it can encourage you like trust me you're so young so i'm i'm willing i'm willing to do it to do it as long as it encourages you because i really think you're so freaking young dude I twenty if I was in the beginning of my twenties, I was such a moron when I was twenty. Like when I think back, I was so so much of a moron. <laughs> maybe yeah, I still just, am. Uh, maybe I somewhat still am, but way less than I was. It's just like the the events that are surrounding all this, you know, the pandemic. It's a definitely a deadline for me. I need to because the study with me content, it's a uh, going to be only booming like at maximum like it's going to be growing at the highest rate during the pandemic when most people are home and i want to reach as many people as i can before the pandemic ends um so i realize i've been pretty hard on myself but um i think someone has to be hard on themselves and i'm more than willing to to be that person yeah, I mean, that's that's very nice of you. Well, I always say be disciplined in your duties, but also in your rewards. So um, I actually get accused of the same thing on my chat. Enrico, you're too harsh on yourself. Like, give yourself a break. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really strong of you to say it. Um, but yeah, I mean, we want to push ourselves, right? We want to try to improve. So we got to be a bit like that I yeah. get that I just kind of have like a a mission you know and uh it's something that I want I want yeah. more than anything you know yeah. yeah you be take take care of yourself as well though in the process okay mm -hmm. to you have to be very careful about your body and your rhythm and your happiness and your health those are those are important because no, I believe you can accomplish that mission, but you need to stay, you need time to accomplish that mission. So really be look after yourself as well, okay? Be be wise on that as well. Like, don't be too hard. You're 20 years old, man. You, it's, This is like the 10th time I'm telling you this. But it's like, <laughs> trust me, don't be too hard on yourself. You're doing amazing. You're doing amazing. Like... I guess I just kind of want to, I really believe in leading by example and I want to be a role model, right? And in order for me to lead other 20 year olds, I have to be the best 20 year old I can be. So. Yeah. But again, if you want to give a good example, give, give it as well in like taking care of yourself and like, that's really, really important too. Really, really important. I ex recently I experienced experienced depression like heavily, heavily on that. Uh, I talked about it already too much. I don't want to get into it again, but it's like really having some objectives. It's important. Otherwise, you're just wandering around. You need objectives, and. Uh, you know, taking that break, spending some time with that one person you really want to spend time with. Um, and not, do not, you know, what, one thing that I learned from these great figures, uh, it actually made me sort of stop to a certain extent, look at them, you know, like mm -hmm. Leonardo, I Einstein as well. At one point, I was just t tyrannizing myself. At one point, I was like, well, you're not good enough to, to this person to this figure you're just not good enough i was just tyrannizing myself like i you don't turn into einstein in five years not in 10 years maybe in, in a lifetime if you're really really good maybe but be very this is something that i learned by looking at these figures i was tyrannizing myself so much i was like well you should do more well you should do best at this you should be good more good at this you should be and i was just hitting on myself it was i was my own tyrant tyrant you know so mm -hmm. uh, that's that's why i told you like okay be disciplined on your duties but also in your rewards like you are here to help yourself so you can help people you know so that, that was um, important for me yeah 
I don't believe in those kinds of goals. So like, if I'm like, say if a student, right? If I don't get an A in this class, I'm not going to be happy. Then you're just shooting yourself in the foot. What needs what you need to be happy with is becoming someone who can improve their own process and grow as a person. The things that cause you to get straight A's, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you talk a lot. So, uh, so, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. Well, finish. Yeah. I will talk. I will tell you later. Please finish your thought. So it's that thing again when a measure becomes a target it's no longer a good measure when that measure is your is your happiness it becomes your happiness then you're not going to be happy very often true i'm happy right now even though i've studied for 12 hours the past eight months because i can see my own self-growth and development and i'm not burned out at all right i i saw have a will to continue and maybe if i was like naive at the very start and i saw i only got it took me a month and a half to get a thousand subscribers those first three weeks I, my videos were getting like 30 views right that's a measure but i didn't rest my happiness on that i rested my happiness knowing that every week the stream was getting better my study habits were getting better. I was running more. And I'm fine with rewarding yourself, right? But you can't let your measures become your, your target and your happiness. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I think to a certain extent you need measures, otherwise you can't really hit an objective if you don't have a if you if you can't measure an objective uh, then it's not an objective it's just it's too vague you know like if you if you wanna if you wanna let's say my objective is okay we'll study yeah say, so you need to you need to be improving your lead measures so your lagging measures those are your grades those are how long you study your leading measures those are improving things around you that cause those lagging measures if you're trying to sell if you're trying to sell a bunch of cookies, all right, you don't sell, you don't put them out for sale and then see what happens. What you do is you go talk to the chef and see what he thinks. You try to get more people to know about your cookies. You are not happy with, you're not, your goal isn't the, the lagging measure, how many cookies you sell. Your goal is to improve your leading measures, things that have a direct impact on those lagging measures. So for me, that's that lagging measure is my grades, all right? And the things I'm trying to improve, my leading measures, how deep can I get? How much deeper, how much more work can I produce that makes those lagging measures happen? Yeah. So you need to be able to distinguish those types of measures and be able to determine what you need to be focusing your effort on improving because if you're like man i need to improve my grades that doesn't tell you anything you have to break it down how do i improve my grades am i focused enough am i at the current level that i need to be at to understand this material am i is my environment bad am i is my computer does that have too much stuff on it am i using social media too much these are all things that will directly impact your grades. So those are the things that need to be improved. Yeah. And when you do that and that's your goal, then you get those lagging measures, things that actually matter to you, right? Yeah. But after a while, trust me, those be don't become important to you anymore, your lagging measures. Your grades will be great, but what's even more, what's even better is like your own individual personality. The things that cause you to get those grades your self-discipline, your like academic ingenuity, those are the things that you, you become, that you start like valuing. And it takes a while for you to recognize that, right? As a kid, you're told, 
man, you must have been really smart to have gotten a good grade on this assignment. Nice job. You're not told, wow, you must have been really hard. Up. You must have worked really hard on this assignment to get a good grade. And true. it doesn't set up the right mindset for most people because then most people will think that kid was probably too smart and I'll never be like him. They're not thinking, wow, that kid must have been really hard working. I need yeah. to be like him too. Yeah. They don't think about the process. They think about the results. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree with that. You, you talk about process um, quite a lot. Do you want to say something about it? Like, I can see you, like, you really look at the process very neatly and precisely. Like, is it, uh, okay. where does it come from? Like, is it? So if I'm trying to sort a bunch of numbers in smallest to greatest fashion, right? Do I measure how well a certain algorithm sorts those numbers? How do I measure it? Do I measure how quickly it goes? Do I measure how big it is? I need to improve the things that cause that direct result. So your process, the things that cause those outcomes are what will become like defining factors in your life. It becomes more of a lifestyle when you're at the gym and you're pushing yourself to get that one more rep in versus, wow, look how big my arms are. You're going to be someone who seeks comfort in knowing that you're, you can push yourself to improve the things that most people can't do how hard you can go and how much drive you have to keep pushing even when you don't want to be there mm -hmm. like i have had days where i don't want to sit down man i want to you know go hang out with my cat go outside watch anime read read comic books listen to music drive my car talk to friends well, to, you have to do it to a certain extent, though, right? I do, which is why I don't sit here and study all day, like some YouTubers. Guilty. <laughs> well, it's I mean, a, it's I a take balance. One, day, one day off. I take one day off, but yeah. It's a balancing act. I got breakfast with my friends this morning. Yeah, that's And nice. I still have a life. They're still, they still care about me, and I still care about them. I know what's happening in their lives. And I'm all my friends I've had since middle school, elementary school, high school. And I spend less time than, with them, yes. But I also have a lot more memorable experiences because the time I do spend with them, it's valuable, right? Very valuable. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think you said very wise words, actually. It's pretty, I agree with pretty much everything you said. There's nothing I don't agree with. Um, really, you know, when you speak about process, you actually remind me of a YouTuber chat. I don't know if you, <laughs> Malik goes balance. Yes, <laughs> uh, Malik is sort of like so it's a it's kind of a relationship, let's say. But we are not girlfriend and boyfriend, guys. Chat, don't even think it for a second. And Malik will be like, "Well, let's spend more time together," and I'm like, "Yeah, I want to." Uh, but we're both trying to improve ourselves. Um, it's valuable that time though that you spend with people you truly care about it's so so valuable so so valuable I mean that's the last words of Steve Jobs if I remember correctly like I one of his last few words was like yeah now that I'm in the hospital and death is literally walking near me uh, I regret not spending more time with my family instead of working all the freaking time so if I remember, uh, yeah, yeah. no balance, no yeah, balance. Yeah, the balance. He, uh, CEO at Apple and Pixar worked for 22 hours, slept for an hour. That's yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, you know, your point is very validated by big figures, and I think it's a true, is a true point. Like to me, I, I agree also with the I, like I, I find fun in the process. I want to have fun uh, while I study for crazy number of hours like for me it's fun it's exciting i want to do this uh, and the process is so important it reminds me actually of um i don't know if you know gary vaynerchuk do you know gary vaynerchuk uh is he an author 
also, yeah. Um, it sounds familiar, but yeah, yeah. So who is he? Yeah, he's like a YouTuber who is also an author and an entrepreneur. And uh, he talks about the process a lot. He is like, yeah, you, you're, you're aiming at, let's say, be a millionaire. Wrong objective. You have to look at the process. You have to improve the process. You gotta have to love. You, you gotta love working, to, you know, eighteen hours, nineteen hours, eighteen hours a day, and nineteen hours a week. You gotta love that if you really want to. You don't have to aim to the one million. You have to aim. To, he speaks a lot about the process, and your your um, your thoughts remind me of him uh, when he talks about this stuff. Maybe I'll send you a few a few links which are very worthwhile. Um, yeah, there's actually one of his he's, he's, he's old, like he's, he's legitimately compared to me, like he's 40 some, 45, 50, yeah, something like that. He's very, he's much older. And there is this video, it's a great video, I will definitely send you the link. If you have time, definitely watch it. It's like he giving, giving advice to a 20 years old. And I mean, I don't think you need that advice because basically all he says is what you're saying right now anyway, so. It's like yeah, you are you have the right mindset, and it's really amazing to see how wise you are, and how your ideas are true when you're twenty. Like it's it's really a notable and valuable and nice and amazing thing. So my compliment for that as well. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. I was much much more flawed. So it's it's really nice to see someone like that. Hey James, I think I think it's been so amazing. Uh, it's been such a nice conversation. Um, I feel like I feel I feel I feel like I I, I don't want to take too much of your time, man. It's been already so nice to have you, the time you spent. So I think, chat. What do you think? Can we can we go? Do you do you guys allow us? <laughs> Mika, please tell me about Mika. Is Mika there? Yeah, um, I can show you real quick. Mika, they will chat Mika, Mika. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> hey, why do you look so pissed? Yeah, she looks. She Mika, looks come so on. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, hold up. Man, this is a nice day outside. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. It's really nice there, damn. It's really nice Cute, at least for these new people, Mika. <laughs> All right. Mika is so nice. I, it made me laugh when you said uh, in a recent stream, like you were like uh, filming the cat, too, like you were doing right now, and you said, <laughs> This is the last face I see when I die. <laughs> it made me laugh. <laughs> It's so cute and humorous because you see the cat. It's, it's, it's like a meme almost in itself. It's so funny. Uh, Mika's pretty. Uh, she's definitely more popular than me. <laughs> so. I, I love cat memes. I really do. And Mika is amazing. Everybody loves her. Me too. Mood Queen, Mika, best podcast. <laughs> Thank you, Atosa. Hey. Damn, Come this here, podcast Mika. was really... I had really a blast. This, this was possibly one of the realest podcast i had this far i really think we talked about real stuff and true stuff and meaningful stuff quite a lot it was uh, i don't like shallow conversations man yeah I like... yeah i mean that's really nice to have someone you can actually talk you know like that is it's really really nice so yeah thanks thanks for joining us james it was anytime I'm, i think uh, people got something from it so as long as that happens i'm good with it I think they did. I think they did. James, everybody, he's such a great creator. If you don't know him, what are you doing? Go to his channels, James Scholes. Smash like and subscribe. He's a man of principles, a good person. I can really, really say that. And thank you so much, James, for joining us, really. All right. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. You're always welcome. <laughs> All right, guys, that was James for you. It was such a nice experience so um i go guys see you tomorrow and see you james as well I yeah thank you yeah have a nice uh, rest of your saturday uh, well um yeah
Yeah. <laughs> I guess what, what little what left what little you have left, I guess. Isn't it nighttime over there? Yeah, I mean here is night. I mean I would really go on, but well we, we can talk a bit more if you want, but I am gonna say a bye to the chat because guys it's been amazing. It's been amazing. All right, thank you, so thank you guys. Me. I appreciate uh, I appreciate you coming out and uh, supporting Enrico for sure. It's, it's very sweet of you, James. <laughs>